All right, let's take a look at the Seiko SKX007, the legendary and iconic dive watch. Let's go over the specs really quickly, and then we'll dive into my review of the watch and experience of ownership. And then at the end, we'll talk about whether I recommend this watch in 2021 or going forward. Uh, let's dive into the case measurement here is 42 millimeters wide. You have a thickness of 13.7 millimeters. You have a lug to lug of 45.7. You have the lug width of 22 millimeters. You have a um, aluminum bezel insert with 120 click unidirectional bezel. You have a Harlex crystal up top. You have the 7S26 movement and you have the printed indices on that. It's, it's mentioned as black. But this, this uh, dial is actually a charcoal matte gray, very dark gray, I believe. That's what I would, that's what I would call it. Um, it. Everywhere you see it, though, the SKX says it's black on black. So you have the Jubilee bracelet with hollow end links, screw down case back, screw down crown, unsigned. Um, remember, this is, this is, even though it, this is part of the uh, Seiko 5 line, right? This is still an ISO certified dive watch. So you're getting 200 meters of water resistant with this one. I've owned this particular one for a little over two years now. I've had SKXs before. And then like anybody else, you just kind of beat them to hell and then you get rid of it, sell it or mod it or do whatever. I don't know what happened to the other ones I had, but this one I've had for two years and it's still... A great watch um, to wear. I have a seven inch wrist for reference and this thing you will see wears perfect on my wrist. I think you can go if you have a six inch wrist you can still pull this off. If you have an eight inch wrist it just probably fit even better. Um, then there's no overhang. It hugs the wrist perfectly. That jingly jangly jubilee bracelet just just melts on your wrist. You forget that you're wearing this thing at the end of the day. After a long day, you don't feel it, especially with that four o'clock crown that does not dig into your wrist at all. And this thing, this thing wears perfectly. A lot of people like to wear them on NATOs. Uh, I get it. I like NATOs as well, but that, that Jubilee bracelet just makes it wear, I think, so much better, even than a NATO. So my experience with owning this for over two years consistently now is uh it's a great little timepiece that doesn't pretend to be anything that it's not it's no nonsense it's printed indices with seiko's legendary lumi bright on there um the thing is though when you own these if you've owned these before you know that there's a lot of little imperfections with these uh, from factory so as you can tell on mine that's six o'clock indice see on the chapter ring it doesn't align so the chapter ring is a little bit to the right i'm sorry the chapter ring is a little bit to the left and the end is the six o'clock indice is a little bit to the right and i can't capture it on camera but at the nine o'clock position there's a little piece of lint that came from seiko that's kind of stuck in between the chapter ring and the dial and the second hand seems to kind of stick with it and then it lets it go it doesn't affect the timekeeping at all i can just see it move a little bit and it's a little piece of white it's like a hair like a like a cloth string so it's not it's not thick at all it just it, it doesn't affect the watch at all but it's just there the point with that is there's a lot of little things that make this Thing, you know, very quirky very imperfect but i think at the end of the day that's the charm of this watch the hollow end links the jingly jangly jubilee the misaligned chapter ring all these things add up to what shouldn't be but is a great dive watch i love putting this thing on i love looking at it on my wrist but with that being said i did not pay current market price now that it's been discontinued the market has gone up and you can find these used on eBay for $250 to $290 for a good example. 
um, brand new. These things are running around $300. And I've even seen some listed that are the J model for 500 and they actually sold for that price. So for $500, you're getting Harlex crystal, misaligned chapter rings, aluminum bezel insert, you know, you're getting a, a hollow end links. It's not spec wise. It's not up to date anymore. Seven S two six movement, which does not hack or hand wind. I mean, for 500 bucks, I would, I wouldn't buy this for $500 for $300. I think you're still okay. Um, I think this is a great wash for $300. I think that they'll kind of stay at that price. And I think that's what they're going to, they're going to be valued at even in the future because I think there's always going to be a market for these things because even though there was a lot made, uh, people fell in love with this thing. Everybody rated it their top five, top 10 dive watches of all time to, at any price range. And this is always on the list. Watch snobs. Everybody gives it respect at least, you know, even if they say they won't buy it, they at least know, hey, this is a serious dive watch with serious pedigree, with good measurements, um, as far as case and, and lug to lug goes, I mean, it's wearable. It's, it's almost, a, it's imperfections make it, I think a very close to perfect watch. So with that being said, I mean, it's, it's a great watch overall, but I think nowadays it's kind of obsolete and I hate saying that because I love to wear this thing and, and, and owning it, but for anybody getting into the hobby, I would not recommend this as a first or second watch you have to really kind of it's kind of like a classic car you have to know what you're getting into you have to have maybe experience with it to know that what what you're getting for your money because i think it would leave a sour taste in your mouth if you bought this for 500 bucks and you can't even set the time to where you're using your phone to synchronize with it i mean i think this is an actual enthusiast watch at this point at this price range with that said a good alternative for this now, I think even from Seiko is the Seiko King Turtle. I mean, now with the King Turtle, you're looking at this price range for three hundred dollars. Even five, if if you buy the, if you're looking at the J model for five hundred dollars, you can get these turtles for around mid fours to low fours. And with this, you're getting a ceramic bezel insert. You're getting a sapphire crystal, and you're getting a four R thirty six movement, which has hacking and hand winding right so your second your second um arrow stops when you pull the crown out and you can hear that hand winding so you're just getting upgrades overall so that so that from the base 300 dollars that you're getting this new for the extra 100 dollars, 150 bucks it's actually spread out wide on this on this watch and i think it's a big bigger and better bang for buck for this watch. This is what I would recommend for a newer enthusiast. If you're looking to get that Seiko vibe, there's honestly at this price range, I don't think there's any better, better alternative. This is still an ISO certified diver with 200 meters, Luma bright, everything else. The chapter rings are still a little misaligned on, on this one. So the QC issues are still there. Cause it's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still the same company, but spec wise, this has just a little bit better materials overall. So this is, I think, what I would recommend for a new, new enthusiast, but this is still a great dive watch, even in 2021. I just don't recommend this for a new enthusiast. I mean, these things are built like tanks. I mean, there's even a YouTuber out there named Watch Chris. Go check him out on his YouTube channel. He has a mini series where he tries to kill this thing he drops it onto concrete and he bakes it and he does a bunch of other stuff. Go watch it. And it's actually a great little mini series, but he put this thing in the oven and he baked it. And the only thing they gave out was the plastic parts inside of it. If I remember correctly, all he had to do was replace them and then it just kept ticking. So, I mean, these things are almost bulletproof. I think the only thing that can stop this thing is if you take a bullet point blank range to this thing, right? But besides that, there's nothing really you can do to 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 kill it and i watch watch chris uh proved it kind of so let me know what you guys think about the skx in the 2000 and uh 2021 and going forward uh let me know what you guys think about the alternative with the uh, seiko king turtle 
Um, and then don't forget to leave your comments below. And let's actually do a loom shot here so you guys can see the Luma Bright. Let me just charge this up really quickly. And then this is just a quick little charge. Even with the lights on, you can see this thing is glowing. Now let me turn the lights off really quick. Show you guys what I'm talking about. So that's what you come to expect with an actual real dive watch, right? I mean, Seiko's legendary for their for their Luma Bright. So at the end of the day, is it a great watch? Yes. Newer, newer enthusiasts, kind of beware. Hold off on it to give them a little bit more experience, I think, maybe with another Seiko diver. And then you can jump back to this one and experience the classics. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. See you next time.